financial freedom, it's within everyone's reach. And this key shows you how to build prosperity and generational wealth for your family on Becoming the Bank. Hello, hello, hello. It's me, Anissa Keys, with Becoming the Bank. If you're tuning in for the first time this week, this is a podcast that shares biblical principles and practices that have helped me to become a generational wealth builder. This is not a how-to podcast, but a becoming podcast. How to become a wealth builder. How to become someone who is financially free. Listen, we started a new series called Mana Season. This is pretty dope. Like, I love the story in Exodus 16. Right At this point in time, the Israelites have finally been released from bondage after 400 years, right? They leave out, Pharaoh chases them for a little bit. He gets like swallowed into the Red Sea because the Lord is that good, right? Now they're in this wilderness season and they're maybe like a month and a half out of like bondage, right? They are headed towards Canaan which is the promised land, right? And they're hoping to be able to get there, eat off the fat of the land, live good lives like God has like promised them, right? So really this ends up being what I referred to earlier in my podcast, um, the start of my podcast, like the liminal season. And a liminal season is right when you're in the middle like of something, you like are not where you used to be. So you're better off than where you used to be, but you're not where God has promised you to be. So you can't always see, you're kind of in the weeds, right? Kind of reminds you of the wilderness, right? Sometimes you're wondering, you're trying to figure out what's happening. You don't have clear perspective on like where God is taking you, but you know, it's going to be good. You don't know when it's going to happen though. And you don't know how it's going to happen. And in this season, typically doubt sets in, right? It's really common. This is where your faith is tested, right? It's required, it's really a space where transformation is inevitable because you have to arise. So you have to rise to this occasion. It's to me where becoming happens, right? Because in order for you to get into that next season, you need to become someone different than you were before. You hear me, right? And so the Israelites are in this wilderness. They're tired. They're hungry, right? They're, they start complaining to Moses who led them out of captivity. And he's, they're like, dang, you know, you brought us out here to die. I mean, it, at least when we was in Egypt, we were in slavery. They fed us. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm paraphrasing, right? Like I'm, I'm trying to make it a little bit more relatable and how I understand it, right? But they are complaining about the fact that they are in the wilderness. They are hungry and they're tired and they're lost. They're not at home where they used to be. So they're out of captivity, but they're not where they're, where God has called them to be, right? Please read this story for yourself. It's so good. Listen, God responds by telling Moses to tell the people that, listen, they're going to get quail at night. And then every day, right, um, they'll have manna that will fall from heaven. <laughs> it's so good. He tells them, though, only for them to get enough for the day. Like they can't they can't take more and store it up, which is the natural desire, right? When you, you have manna fall, you're like, okay, I got food today. But like, I still ain't got nothing in my fridge for tomorrow. I have nothing stored up for next week, right? And so naturally, you know, you might want to try to grab more. Well, some of them did take more and then it rotted, right? So you only got enough to satisfy you for that day. There's so much in this for kingdom wealth management. In this story, right, it's like you think about like all of the, the wisdom that can come from relying on God every day for what you need. Last week, we talked about that in this season, like you have to understand how important it is to rely on God for your next. Listen, you have to understand how imperative it is to rely on God for your next. But this week, still in manna season, right? We're going to talk about how you learn the principle of leaning into the word of God for your daily bread, the word of God, your Bible. Now, listen, you know, the instruction manual for your existence has been along for centuries and still people don't access it and tap into it to get the wealth of knowledge that's inside of it. This book is God breathed, God inspired, the only truth in an infallible word from God. It is your daily bread. They describe manna as like some grain, right? Like, like, like bread, like substance. So it makes sense that this is your daily bread. So just another way to sort of spin this, just like the Israelites, you will need to rely on this daily bread. And oftentimes it's during this time that the word of God needs to be your substance. 
Listen to what I'm saying. Because you think in your mind, I need food. The Israelites were thinking, we need food. But what I am implying is that you need more than food right? That you need the word of God to be like your daily bread. And so that means you need to feed off the word during this season or you will not sustain. Now, maybe you'll survive. Maybe you'll get through. Maybe you'll turn back to bondage, right? Maybe you'll go back. Maybe you'll go back to where you came from, right? And what is it? What the word talk about like returning to your own vomit, you know, right? So maybe that will be another option, but you will not sustain without having access to the word of God and feeding on that daily. So imagine me, right? <clears throat> I'm in this season of time, right? That everything that could go wrong is going wrong, right? At this point in time, I'm trying to, I'm building my house and I need more money. And I, so I have to make it happen. And I don't know how I'm going to make it happen. I'm not really sure quite yet. Right. And so, you know, I'm accessing resources that are out there and um, and, you know, you, you still need resources to access resources. Right. The city has this amazing plan. This is about three and a half, four years ago to give away twenty thousand dollars to anybody that is willing to build a home in North. There's all these empty lots, I don't know, like 300, 400 empty lots. And they, they're, they're being loitered on, right? People are, are, are dumping on them. And they're really not making money for the city because if there's not a house on it, they can't get property taxes from it. And so, right, that ends up being, you know, sort of like a, um, uh, an injury point for them, right? They want you to build on it. They want ownership of the lot so they don't have to be responsible for them. So what they do is they create this incentive and they say, listen, if y'all are willing to build on these lots, we'll give you $20,000 and then we'll forgive it after five years, right? So I'm like, bet, right? Like I've all, Lord has always blessed me with, with the spirit to like seize opportunities, like carpe diem, right? To seize the moment, right? So I'm like, I'm going to try for it. I'm going to go for it. Right. But, but the problem was that I was the very first one to do this program. So the city hadn't like worked out all their kinks. And so I hit challenge after challenge after challenge. And it was like, it was like, there was nothing that was letting up. Not only that, right. Is that you needed way more money than you would typically need for a down payment of a house. And so like you had to get a surveyor and an inspector. So I have very similar to kind of the season I'm in with this building. This money is just leaving all over the place. And I really can't see this come into fruition. Like at any time, if the deal doesn't work, then like I lose and I don't just lose the opportunity. I lose all of the, the money, the time, the energy, the resources that I have put into this. Right. So one of the other last things that happens is that after I've cleared the lot, then I, I promise you, this is very common, right? When you feel like, okay, I'm almost to the finish line. We find out that the, the land that I'm purchasing is uh, uh, um, contaminated. I'm like, in the city. I'm like, why is there contaminated land in the city, right? It used to be uh, a, a gas station and it's going to take $50,000 to remediate. I mean, like, it kind of like stopped the deal head in. Now, I'm not... I'm not where God has promised. I'm also not in the beginning. I'm in a better position where I was before. But this is this is my natural desire was to go back, was to say, forget it. This it's just not possible. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, you know, maybe God doesn't want it for me. You know, uh, you know, maybe I was maybe I was leaping too soon, or maybe this is too big of a deal. Maybe, you know, maybe it's not gonna work, right? And so it's common to be in that space when you hit this liminal season. And the only thing I had that I could rely on for my next, right? I had to feed off the word of God. I mean, literally it was my daily bread. Listen, I had to be reminded that greater is he that is within me than he that's in the world, right? That all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That in the world, I would always have tribulation, right? God promises me that. But then he tells me to be of good cheer because he's conquered the world. And then later on, he calls me more than a conqueror. And he says, listen, you don't have to fear when you're with me. Don't be anxious for anything, but with prayers and petitions, make all your requests long. He calls me his shepherd. He, call, he says he's my shepherd and says, I will never lack anything. Or, right, he says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? It was these daily nuggets that kept me fed. You need this bread during this time to sustain you through manna season. Remember, this is a podcast about becoming. 
How do you become someone that during the wilderness season, the manna season, the liminal season, the one where you aren't where you used to be, but you're not where God has called you to be, right? Right, that you need some bread that you can live off of, that you can not just survive, but you can thrive off of. Now you might say, Anissa, like, you ne- you know, you really need to be reading the word every day. <laughs> Listen, you need to be reading the word every day, right? I, I totally agree with that 100%. However, right, I'm realistic in a sense of that, um, it seems like, and I'm not saying that this is true, that that this is a struggle for some saints, some believers, right? And they sort of struggle to get to it every day. What I'm telling you is that during a season where you are in wilderness season, where you in liminal season, manna season, you need to make it a habit to get some of that word every single day. Okay, listen, here's my three becoming principles and practices for this season. Number one, Become someone who knows that the world's food is not satisfying. And listen, you have to know this in your heart of hearts. Like you have to know that no matter what you're being fed on. I mean, I hear all the time, right? I I read these quotes and, you know, I do these daily um, uh, sort of inspirational messages. And, you know, like I listen to this, um, this podcast that really helps me to become a better person. Listen. I'm all for that. Praise the Lord. The Lord has like gifted people with so many different ways of like feeling good about themselves, of of being encouraged, of being looking at the world through a you know a positive perspective. I'm with that. But okay, you need more than that, (laughs) and you need to become someone who knows that, not who thinks that, who knows that what you get from the world is not enough. There's a story of Jesus, right? He sits down, he's tired, he's at Jacob's well, and he asks a Samaritan woman to draw him some water to drink. There's another little exchange because she's like, wait, I didn't know the Jews and Samaritans got along, whatever. But what he ends up telling her, right, is he says, I would like to tell you about some living water, right? That, That there is some water that you can drink that's of this world, but you'll be thirsty again, right? But there's something greater that you can have that will give you living water, like a well, like a spring, like a well, a springing up inside you, right? So there's this idea that what the world has for you, though it sustains you for a little bit, it doesn't stain you longevity, right? It doesn't give you like what you need to sustain and sustain, right? It does not do that. And so you need to get into a space where you can really understand that you need more. You need more than just what the world has to offer. Okay, I'm going to move on. Number two, you need somebody, you need to become hungry. So I don't believe in greed, but I do believe in hunger. And I think it's appropriate and it's okay, which is the reason why the Lord feeds us, right? You eat the word daily, right? And you should always be hungry for more, right? So you need to become someone that hungers after the word of God. That right, that like literally desires it and wants it, wants to be filled. That keeps you coming back in a hungry spirit, right? To, for you, especially during this time of season where you probably are diminished every day, allows you to be continually filled up over and over and over again. Listen, my last one, number three. Become someone in fellowship with other Bible thumpers. I had to add this just because I feel like this is really good for me. So I I really, really feel like this is an important part of fellowship and connection with Christians is really, really important period. But I think oftentimes we get together to hang out because we all love the Lord. And so maybe we do a little worship, um, but the worship um, doesn't always look like studying the word of God. So you almost have to be around people who really love or seek to or enjoy reading the word, right? Because then they talk the word. <laughs> like like when they're giving you messages, it's like the word, you know? Like, it, it, and it doesn't always sound like scriptural, but like the the ideologies that they have and their belief systems and, and how they their perspectives are all from the word. And so when you're in fellowship with them, you don't realize that like you're hearing the word of God <laughs> and you don't even know it. And so to me, 
that is nice, not only to motivate you closer to reading the word of God, but you're hearing it and you're feeding off of it if you are around people that typically love reading the word of God. So so I'm not saying that you shouldn't read it yourself because you still should, right? But if you're around folks that also read it, you can feed off of them daily as well. Isn't God so good, right? Like that you don't have to do it the way everybody else does it, um, that he has so many different ways to get to him in so many different ways for us to thrive. We're in this series called Mana Season. We're going to be here for a few weeks. This is going to give us some principles and practices of navigating wilderness seasons in our lives. They are inevitable when you are attempting to find financial freedom, to attain generational wealth. It is required. You will have seasons of time where you are not on the mountain. I can guarantee you that, right? You need to learn skills principles, practices that will ensure you win during this season, okay? Mana season is inevitable, right? It, it, for the lives of wealth builders, kingdom wealth builders particularly, you're going to ebb and flow out of them. I told you about when I bought a house, it was present. With this building, it's present. I can think back to other seaching. Stewardship over your financial well-being is critical during this time. So I hope and pray that you're able to listen to this message, be encouraged during this time, and that you take some of these principles and practices to build generational wealth. My hope and my dream for you is that you become a blessing and a resource to your family, your sphere of influence, and your community. This is Becoming the Bank with Anissa Keys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Check back next week for more of Anissa's Kingdom Principles to Live a Prosperous Life. To find previous episodes of Becoming the Bank, log on to ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com. Get fast, reliable internet for any budget. Now qualifying customers can get Xfinity internet free through the Affordable Connectivity Program. That's right, free high-speed internet from Xfinity. And Internet Essentials customers can get equipment included at no extra cost. Get started today. At hy we take pride of being part of the communities we serve. In 2021, we donated more than 14 million meals, and this year, we're committed to doing even more. For over 90 years, we've been the place that people turn in time of need, and we take that very seriously. That's why we're loading our semis full of food this week and making deliveries across the Midwest to help families this Easter. To join our effort, simply donate when you're at the checkout. Together, we can make a big difference for those in need. There's a new way to get around in North Minneapolis. It's Metro Transit Micro, a new ride sharing service that connects you with Metro Transit bus routes or wherever you need to go on the north side. It's convenient, affordable, and accessible. Metro Transit Micro uses minibuses to reach more neighborhoods and you'll have shorter wait times. It costs just the same as bus routes and it's easy to use. You can pay your fare in cash, a go-to card, or the Metro Transit app. Just go to metrotransit.org slash micro. Download the app and create your account. It's really simple. So whether you're going to a friend's house in Bryn Mawr to watch the Vikings game, or you need to get dropped off at the Metro Sea Line station to hop on a bus to get to work across town, Metro Transit Micro got you covered. Book a ride, get picked up, and get where you need to go. Start riding today on one of the new Metro Transit Micro minibuses. Looking for a meaningful career with great pay and great benefits? Want to be part of something bigger? Here's your chance. Union Pacific Railroad is hiring train crew members of the Twin Cities area, now offering hiring incentives up to $15,000. No previous railroad experience is needed. We provide all the essential training and you can get a free college education while working. Get your career on the right track with Union Pacific and apply today at up.job slash Minnesota. That's up.job slash Minnesota. It's back to school time, and that means it's back to cooking breakfast for your kiddos and making school lunches. That's a lot of cracked eggshells and cut off sandwich crust. Now listen, before you think about throwing those food scraps away, think about recycling them. Ramsey County has a program that can help you do just that, and it won't cost you a dime. Ramsey County has a free food scraps recycling program that lets you collect stuff like apple cores, coffee grounds, and veggie scraps. Here's how it works. 
Put all those scraps into a compostable bag. Then once a week, drop it off at a free food scrap site by your house. And listen, I understand that life is busy, so if you can't get there once a week, just toss the bag in the freezer until you can find the time to do it. To locate a food scrap collection site near you and to get more information about the program, visit RamseyRecycles.com slash food scraps and tell your friends and family about it. Let's all do our part to help save the planet. All right, did you know I was the Mommy Slam Dunk champion? Really? <laughs> yes, really, don't sound so surprised. Let's see it. Oh, you're ready, all right, here we go. Let's hear the crowd. <sighs> so go to right, I go to left, fake a mom. Mama, go up, up, up! <laughs> She did it. Again. You can't avoid gravity, but United Healthcare can help you avoid financial surprises by helping you compare costs and doctor quality ratings. United Healthcare.